We're glad to know that you're still there and watching the run-up. Uh, now we're concerned about the budget. We've talked about the budget a few days ago, but uh, we remember that a total budget deficit under the President Mohamed Buhari is said to be uh, going to 47.43 trillion naira, according to an, an anal analysis of the federal government's data from the Budget Office of the Federation. The budget data covers the actual budget deficit and projections for 2015 up to 2023 fiscal years. And according to data, deficit financing has risen by 370.54% from 2.41 trillion naira in 2016 to 11.34 trillion naira in 2023. We're now joined by Dr. Chinwike Uba. Hello and welcome to the program, Dr. Uba. Hello. Thank you for having me on your program today. Well, we have a few bullet points from your write-up that we had the privilege to see. Uh, uh, we may touch some of these specifically, but in a broad sense, help us to understand, Doctor. In your words, you said 2023 Federal Government of Nigeria budget figures are unrealistic and not in agreement with budget objectives. Work us through how you came to this conclusion in a layman's terms. Yeah, if you look at the budget, the president in his budget speech says that there is a budget of fiscal consolidation and um, <clears throat> for incoming administration. But by the time you look at the budget, I did say that you don't consolidate your fiscal uh, operations of fiscal states by spending more on consumption. And as you just ha 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 stated a few minutes ago, our budget deficit has been widening since 2015, but the major problem is not that we are having a budget deficit that is financed through borrowing, both domestic and external borrowing. But the major problem is that most of the borrowing or deficit or is, is fine, is the, the, the money is used to finance recurrent expenditure. Whereas the law says that for every borrowing, that the government contracts, it should be used to finance capital investments and human development. And we have seen the weighted average of uh, the borrowing that we have had in the past, about just about 28% of it has been used to finance uh, capital investment and human development. So about 70% or about you know, we are utilized to funding recurrent expenditures, specifically um, personnel, recurrent, and also uh, debt service payments. And you find out that also that when you look at the budget performance in the past, in terms of re 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 revenue and expenditure, we have never had an a revenue pay performance that is above uh, 70 pa 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 Yeah. In fact, as of last year, as of, as of November, you know, 2022, which we just have one month left, the revenue performance is about 60%. And most of the revenue uh, um, 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 sources are underperforming. Some are even at 25%, some are 28%. So that gives you an indication that the projections that have been made, both on the revenue side, and the expenditure side are quite unrealistic. More so when the economy is currently facing very harsh conditions. As I did say, we have over 133 million persons that are in abject poverty, not just, not just uh, 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 financial poverty, but abject poverty. The literacy rate is also on the high side. So it becomes increasingly impossible to meet those re 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 revenue projections and uh we can't also continue growing yes we might be credit worthy to a reasonable extent but you can see based on world bank and imf projections we might not be able even to assess the funds that we have projected to you know assess to finance the de de deficit moreover the ways and means growing that we have as of last year in november we have paid about 1.5 trillion in, in interest on ways and means. So, and that is causing, is part of the things that are contributing to the inflation that we have. And inflation also, 
is expected to, to, to rise even when the government has said that they are projecting it to be at 17.1 percent or currently we're already at 21 point something and like i did say in that article in that uh, statement i issued re, uh, inflation will keep increasing moreover when they have you know secretly increased electricity tariff we are also faced with fuel scarcity and the price of fuel is expected to increase we experienced flood last year, which also will also impact on food prices and all that. So all these things means that we are not projecting well. Secondly, our oil output last year averaged 1.221 barrels per day. And the government is pro projecting 1.69 for 2023. And I asked, how would that happen? What magic would they do? You know, and all that. So it shows sure that we are very ambitious. We have you know, increase the re revenue projections in order to, you know, balance our, bu 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 our budget, so to say, which I think is not the right thing to do at this moment. Um, uh, uh, Bayo, over to you, please. Uh, just one question, because uh, the time is up. He has almost given us everything that we want. Just one question okay. for you, Bayo. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, um, Dr. Oba, thank you once again. Uh, just from my perspective, one question actually, um, and this has to do with, I don't know if you've addressed it before. Since 1999, we realized that uh, in every transitional year, the outgoing government will make its budget for the whole year. Okay, so what the Buhari administration is doing is consistent with what we've seen before. It's budgeted for the whole of 2023 even though the administration will live in May 2029. Now, the incoming administration at federal and state level since 1999, they always send a supplementary budget to the National Assembly once they are sworn in. And I may be wrong, but I haven't noticed if there is any agency of government which tries to ensure compatibility in these two budgets in the transitional year. And given the concerns you have raised, do you foresee any challenges as we transit in 2023? Yeah, already there's a, there's a challenge, you know, staring in our thoughts in the face. Um, it depends on what the policy thoughts of the incoming ad administration will, will be. The truth is that they, they are going to face serious fiscal challenges, except they adopt a different, you know, approaches or, or strategies in terms of uh, shoring up the the capital base and also ensuring that the businesses in uh, in 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 nigeria thrives part of the problem we are having now is that you can see that the revenue is shrinking even though we say that not only revenue is improving but from where is more of half revenue which you're overburdening businesses and in the, in the, in the individuals with us when their profits and income is shrinking. So it's just a matter of time before they will, re they will revolt over this thing. So what I would, what I would expect the incoming administration to do is to find a way to encourage businesses by making the business environment more friendly, such that new businesses will thrive. And part of the things that I think needs to happen quickly, as soon as the new administration comes in, is to also provide the necessary enabling environment. I did say in that uh, statement I issued that you can see that most of our manufacturing industries are are dead, and even some few are divest. Even multinational oil industries are divesting from the country, and that's a result of the business environment we find ourselves. Just one policy trust, and not just executive order, because most times executive orders can be can be can be neglected, even though laws are also being fraudulent abuse in Nigeria, is to make sure that certain goods, I don't think that, that there's any federal or state MDA that is using locally manufactured cars. All of them import cars. If we, we, we cannot jumpstart our, 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 our automobile industry by having a, a policy that makes it compulsory that all government MDAs must patronize locally manufactured vehicles. I'm not just talking about assembly load, but manufacturing. What that would do also is that it will create the kind of employment that we need, you know, as well as also bringing the kind of sources without taking those funds outside the country. Because already we are bedeviled with uh, 
so much de de demand for forest. So when you do this, those things there, it keeps, it helps our Naira to appreciate better while also creating employment and also reducing poverty in, in Amis. The second one that can be done as a quick mean is also the test files. If you watch, before now, we have a lot of textile industries in the north that, that were thriving, but all of a sudden, all of them are, are dead. Because we, every one of us wa wants to wear clothes that are imported from Turkey, China, and all the rest of it all. A government policy that will encourage all schools in Nigeria, and maybe even government personnel, those we are paying with our taxes, should always patronize locally made fabrics. If you do that, automatically we have created the market for locally produced fabrics in Nigeria. In, 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 in in, 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 in our climb. You, you can also give them a tax holiday or provide interest-free loans where you, you, you monitor them. And I said, I did said also, instead of CBN, you know, dashing money to big organizations, you can give low-interest loans or guarantee loans to cooperatives that are managed, that have been trained and for whose uh, uh, proposals or business operations has been audited and certified to be okay. You know, you give them low interest free loans and monitor them because they, those are the kinds of organizations that will create the needed jobs and also help us to, you know, jumpstart the early econ economy. So for me, it depends on what the incoming administration wants to achieve. But we can't continue on the trajectory that we are now. If we continue on this trajectory, the challenges will be even was you know in the next couple of, because we are subsidizing petrol you know is a, is a chicken and egg if you say remove immediately uh based on perception it's not as though that is the reality based on perception you find that the prices of goods and services will even skyrocket so high you know not in tandem with the removal of we, we all are buying in you know in Uruguay, so this money we are buying fuel at 400 and something in Europe. Yeah, but more people are not really complaining so much. But as soon as that announcement comes from the government, you find out that prices will just, you know, move, move up so high. So it depends on what the new administration intends to achieve. But I think they must find a way to encourage local businesses and the people in the, in the, in the okay. country to, to become more productive by creating the enabling environment through policies and laws, and policies and laws that will be implemented without being flagged and abused. Okay, okay. I thought, okay. Dr. Ba, um, <laughs> there's so much when we're talking about how to improve our economy and improve the livelihood of Nigerians, and we'd like to thank you. We cannot have enough time to deal with all that, but we're, we're sure that before the next uh, administration comes in, we'll have opportunities to talk and set agenda, as it were, uh, for all of us to be on the same page as we move into the next phase of our existence as a country, as it were. We'd like to say thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. And Bayo, um, our time is up. We would have had a lot to say as well, but um, your final goodbyes. No, I mean, today's edition has been quite informative. Uh, and, and balanced, you know, so um, it, it's been a pleasure, you know, being a part of the program. Okay. Uh, well, from all of us, the uh, run-up family, we're saying thank you to you for being there. Remember, elections are coming. Do the right thing. We heard uh, some other people saying that we're just going to vote for someone that we know will win, even if it's going to be a disaster. Well, that should not be the mindset you go into the election with. You should go knowing that you are voting your conscience and you're voting who you think can make Nigeria good, no matter where he comes from, no matter what he believes, so long as he believes in Nigeria, that should be your choice. Anyway, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again on Monday. Bye for now.